Hi, I'm Philip from the HANA Academy. In this set of videos, we're looking at the machine learning capabilities that have been introduced to SAP HANA Smart Data Streaming from SPS 11. In this video, we're going to get started with the Smart Data Streaming machine learning capabilities. We're first going to look at the documentation. We're going to see where we can get the code samples for the examples we'll show in uh, the upcoming videos. And we'll also configure HANA Studio so that we can start uh, developing. So the first thing is to find the documentation. And uh, as you may remember, uh, it's help.sap.com. And we can go to forward slash HANA, or in fact, we can go directly to the HANA platform with HANA underscore platform. And within the HANA platform, what we need to do is choose uh, some of the options. We see on the left, we have the HANA options. And if we select that, we can see that HANA Smart Data Streaming is down there. So we select that and what we'll see for the smart data streaming, we want to go to the developer information and it's the developer guide. That's the main area we'll want to look at. We can either download that as a PDF for offline viewing or we can actually access the documentation online. So if I click on that one, the first one here, we can see the HTML version of the developer user guide. And what we're going to do is focus on chapter 14, uh, which is the one called machine learning with streaming. It's here that we'll find all the details relating to the machine learning capabilities, uh, the predictive capabilities that have been added to Smart Drive Data Streaming from SPS 11. So there we go. So it's machine learning with streaming. So a little bit uh, about machine learning with streaming. Basically, traditional data mining is based on historical data, data you've already got in your database that you, uh, you go through and you build a model from it, if it's supervised or you just use the data, if it's unsupervised, and uh, it will give you some kind of, uh, either it will build you a model or it will build you some results, maybe do some clustering for you or something like that. Um, however, that's not necessarily well suited to all scenarios. Perhaps in the world of big data, uh, you've got many sensors uh, or you've got social media data, uh, etc. The things that are happening on a constant basis. What you want is to have your, your models actually being uh, incrementally updated. So basically optimized as new data arrives. And that's very well suited to a streaming kind of scenario. And it's for that reason that we've put uh, machine learning capabilities into the uh, smart data streaming uh, component of HANA. Um, it's, it's different from something such as the, the PAL, the Predictive Analysis Library, or the APL, because those, um, those algorithms, they focus on data that's already in HANA that you then want to analyze, more of this historical approach. Whereas with the machine learning in streaming, um, the data doesn't have to be in HANA. It's, it's going to do some processing in HANA, but the data is something that uh, can be streamed from any source. And actually, as part of that kind of pre-processing, before it gets uh, loaded into HANA, uh, you can actually do your clustering or do your classifications, effectively do your incremental uh, streaming. And that model will be constantly updated as new data arrives in the data stream. Um, and you don't have to store the actual data in HANA. It may be that you use the data, uh, the stream of data actually to build a model, and it's only the model itself that's stored in HANA, not the actual original data was used when you built the model. So it's a slightly different uh, use case and scenario. So more about that uh, is obviously in the user guide, and we're going to be coming back to this user guide later because uh, there, are, there are aspects to, to how you use this capability that you're not going to remember. You're going to need to refer to the guide, some of the parameters and properties uh, in particular. Now, before we also get started, something else you should do is to go to GitHub for the HANA Academy. This is our GitHub site, github.com uh, forward slash sap HANA Academy. And go to the repository, which is called uh, SDS. And in the SDS repository, we'll find actually a set of uh, uh, code snippets for the examples we'll see in upcoming videos. And we'll see some source data, some example streams, which in this case will just be simple CSV files that we'll be able to use to actually test uh, the examples for the algorithms that are coming up. So uh, what you can do here is uh, go and download a zip and it will quickly download into SDS master. Let's go and have a look at our downloads folder. We can see we've got SDS master. What we can then do is extract that. So let's extract it. And you'll see it's given as a folder and it's got our code snippets uh, and the readme in it. And what we could then maybe do is take that, let's maybe just call it SDS. So let's rename and we're going to put that into our desktop. So now we should see in my documents that we have an SDS folder and it's got the code snippets 
and it's got the source data. Uh, so we'll be referring to those later. So that's how you download the uh, examples. The next thing to do is to configure HANA Studio. So let's uh, just close out of there and go into HANA Studio. Now I'm already logged in uh, as a, in this case the system user to my uh, HANA system. I'm going to assume that you're already familiar with smart data streaming. If not, of course go to the uh, excellent uh, playlist that we have in the HANA Academy uh, where Bob in particular teaches you how to get started with smart data streaming. Um, we're going to focus really on the machine learning aspects of it. So here we're connected to uh, the, the core uh, HANA system, so in HANA Studio. Make sure that you've actually installed the uh, the either the plugin or the uh, when you actually install Studio itself, you installed the Smart Data Streaming component. You'll see there are two perspectives: the streaming development and the streaming run test. So actually, let's just open up those two perspectives so we can see them. We're going to be using those later. So if you don't find these perspectives, it means that you're missing the plugin. That's something you can easily do. You can get that from a uh, um, software download center, and you can just go and install this uh, plugin. Even if the studio is already done, Bob's got a video showing you how to do that. So we're going to connect to our streaming server. So in order to do that, we can go into uh, the, uh, the run test uh, area, and then we've got a little button at the top where we can click to set up a new connection. So I'm going to put in the host name. Uh, obviously, you'll know that for your landscape. And also the port. Um, this is instance 7, in fact, of uh, the HANA server. So it's 307, 07 for the instance, and then 26 is typically the port uh, for your streaming server. We'll connect using SSL and with user and password. So we just need to now make that server connection. So now we see on the left we have the connection, and if we write mouse button on it, we can connect to the server, and that will prompt us to give our uh, HANA user and login. I assume that you've already got a suitable user for this. So I'm now going to enter the user and password and log in. So what I can see already is there are a number of different uh, projects that have been set up with Smart Data Streaming that may or may not be using machine learning. We'll be setting up our own projects uh, in this area later. However, before that, what we also want to do is set some general settings for Smart Data Streaming. So we'll go to our window preferences of Studio, and you'll see that there is a HANA Smart Data Streaming uh, uh, X section. And what I'm going to do there, first thing, is I'm going to set the default server, the default streaming server, to the one we just connected to. So I'm going to change it, select the one we just connected to. That will, it will just make it easier for us to work with. And in the run test area, uh, I'm going to make just one change. I'm going to change the stream viewer number of rows displayed. Just for our examples, let's maybe set that to 500, just so we can see a bit more data than the default 25 rows as we're working. So I can apply and OK and those changes have been saved. What I can now do is go to the developer perspective and you'll see that we have uh, two tabs. We have the project area where we'll create our projects and we've got the data services. And again, now for the server we connected to, we can see data services. So we can either double click or right mouse button and say load workspaces. Do the same for default to load services. And we'll find a list of the services that have been set up uh, or that you, you may need to set up if you've not already got this configured. In my case, it's been done. I've actually got here a connection to uh, our HANA server. And when you want to work with this machine learning capability, it obviously needs to be HANA because uh, this is, is uh, the, the models will actually be run uh, uh, by the HANA engine. And again, if I hit uh, right mouse button and discover or double click, I can see both the schemas and tables on that HANA system and also the models. And it's going to be the models. I'll just discover it now. We can see there are one or two models already there. This, the models are where we're going to specify the incremental machine learning algorithms we want to use and to tie that to data. If you're familiar with the predictive analysis library uh, that's been in HANA for a long time, then this is a similar concept to how you use the wrapper generator procedure to, to basically, with table types, to actually set up uh, a process uh, based on a specific uh, data source. Um, we're going to do something similar and parameter and build our models here. These are definitions. And then later we will come into the Project Explorer and we will actually set up smart data streaming projects and they will 
in addition to using anything that you can do in smart data streaming, they will also uh, take advantage and reference one of the models that we create. So basically, that's how we'll tie it together. There's a modeling phase we'll do in the data services, and then we will build uh, projects with um, uh, CCL language, continuous computation language, um, using smart data streaming uh, in general. And there we will actually specify uh, what our uh, project will actually do to load streaming data and make use of the model that we've previously created. So that's the quick introduction and uh, getting started. So what we've done is we've worked out how to find the user guide and the documentation. Always a good idea to maybe mark this as a favorite so you can get back to it easily. Uh, we've downloaded the code snippets and source data from GitHub and we've gone into HANA Studio and just reviewed and checked that everything is set up and we can connect to our, our smart data streaming landscape correctly. So in the next videos we'll actually see how we can start building models and projects and using the algorithms available with the machine learning for smart data streaming.